Hi everybody, this is Atik. I welcome all of you to our YouTube channel Engineering Drive. Dear students, let me start a series of videos on Python libraries. So we know that the main purpose of using Python programming language is not only to produce textual based outputs like C language or even C++, but here the power of Python lies in its libraries. Now in my today's session, let me start and discuss about a new Python library which is NumPy. So what is this actually NumPy all about? So NumPy is a Python package. In simple words, it is a Python library and it is having one specific use. What is the use of this? Let us discuss. What is the actual abbreviation of NumPy? It actually stands for numerical Python. So dear students here, you might have got one clear point that in this library, the main purpose of using it is to perform numerical programming in Python. So if you are if you want to deal with the numbers, if you want to deal with the programs related to numbers in Python, then you need to opt this Python library. Next, it is a library consisting of multi-dimensional array objects and a collection of routines for processing of array. So my dear students, here this library mainly consists of arrays. We know if you are a C, if you are a student of C programming language and Java programming language, then you might have under, already known about what is actually an array. So this library has a specific use of dealing with arrays as an objects. So let me clarify that the most important object defined in a NumPy is an n-dimensional array type called nd array. So here the main power of this NumPy library is it is used to deal with arrays and what types of arrays, how many types of dimensions. We know that C language is more powerful in dealing with arrays only with specific case with one dimensions as well as two dimensions. If you are writing any three dimensional program in C language, it will become very complicated. Similar case with Java programming also. But the advantage of using NumPy is here it supports n dimensional arrays. So you can able to create a Python program dealing with multi-dimensional arrays without any problem. Okay. Next thing. What is actually an array? We know that it describes the collection of items of the same type. So if you are talking about storing the data related to similar type, then we will use arrays. So my dear students and one more important point which is exactly the same when we talked about arrays in C as well as in Java is the items in this particular NumPy library when we are dealing with arrays starts with zero based index. So this point everyone should remember. Okay, how if you want to access any element of an array, if you want to access the first element of the array, it will be accessed with the zero index. Now, this is all theoretical explanation which I have discussed before I am going to start the program. Now, let us discuss some example programs now. Sir, you told that NumPy is used and it mainly consists of multi-dimensional arrays. Now, give us one some example programs that how we need to use this library in Python. Okay, how we need to import this library in Python and how we can create a program dealing with various types of dimensional arrays. So, let me show you. So let me discuss one example program now. Okay, the first thing that we need to do is we need to use the import keyword when we want to import this library. That is NumPy, okay, as NP. And only I am showing you the three line programs now, which is a very basic program. I am going to show you with the help of this NumPy library. Here you can see here, you need to make use of the import keyword and then the library name. What is the name of the library which we are using now? NumPy. As NP. Now most of you will get doubt what is the meaning of as here and NP. So dear students, the library name which we are using in our Python is NumPy. Of course, if you don't, if you are not interested to use this name in your entire program, then you can create an alias name, alias instead of this NumPy. What is the meaning of alias? Alias is nothing but an alternative name. So instead of NumPy, I want to use it as a NP. So for that you can make use of this as keyword. Okay. And the next line what we have done, we have taken one variable and we have created one array. What type of array? One dimensional array which consists of only three values. One, two and three. Next we are displaying with the print function. Okay. Now when we run this program, 
my dear students you will get this similar output what is that output an array consisting of how many values three values one two three there will be no comma that you need to remember here now let me show you how you can able to do this program so let me move to the spider application now which already i have opened for you this is our spider application here you need to type your programs related to num numpy now the first thing what i am going to do here i will use the import keyword space the name of the library so what is the name of the library now we are i am showing to all of you numpy okay space as so alternative name that i want to give it as a m n p so you can select any name so here i am selecting it as a n p now next thing okay take the variable where you want to store that multi dimensional arrays or one dimensional arrays or two dimensional arrays for that i have taken a variable a is equal to and that is assignment operator and then what i am going to do i will make use of this numpy library alias name that is n p dot array parenthesis and here you can store your elements in the array separated by comma so here i am storing three elements okay next in order to display the output print and the name of the variable so dear students this all only three lines program okay once you have completed the program remember to save the program first in our spider application so for this click on this save button okay so it will ask you the name of the file for example here i am giving the name of the program as numpy1.py so let me save this program and once the program has been saved now go to this run option to see the output okay click on this run and dear students here it is our output 1 2 3 these are the three values which we have stored in the array now the question is sir whether it is what type of arrays are this which we which you have created dear students it is a one dimensional array okay sir what about two dimensional array what about three dimensional array sir how to create this you told that python is much more simple compared to c or java when when we are talking about dealing with multiple di multiple dimensional arrays multi dimensional arrays now can you show with example so dear students here simple thing what you need to do here is create how to add, create a two dimensional array with the same program so what i am going to do just here put one comma and then again take the brackets so here i want to show next three elements 4 comma 5 comma 6 so here two dimensions have been created one is consist of three values 1 comma 2 comma 3 second dimension consist of three values 4 comma 5 comma 6 now keep them again in a bracket this is very very important step so again the entire two dimensions you need to keep in bracket now a two dimension array has been created okay that's all now let us check the output now run this program now you can see here first dimension consisting of three values 1 2 3 second dimension consisting of four three values 4 5 and 6 similarly if you want to add three dimensions now what you need to do simply here after this again brackets here i will take 7 comma 8 comma 9 these are the three values now the question is sir in each dimension how many values we can store sir you can store any number of values as you like it is a dynamic array there is no fixed size here you can store as many elements as possible that is one of the advantage of python library that is numpy so dear students i have stored three dimensions now if you, i run this program now you can see the output so i got this is the first dimension which consisting of 1 2 3 second dimension which consist of 4 5 6 and the last dimension which consist of 7 8 9 so you can store as many values as possible in each dimension so the use of this arrays can be reflected in our next topic in our next topic when i am talking about matplotlib library okay which is a gui based library in python which is used to implement various types of graphical representation there we can use this array of our numpy library so dear students i believe that you people got a clear idea about what is the use of numpy python library and how we can effectively create multi dimensional arrays with this library so any type of question simply you can put it in the comment section so with this let me close my today's session of video see you soon everybody take care allah hafiz